Hi, I'm Ronnie O'Sullivan, and today I will be listening and responding to some voice notes of some people that have sent me messages. Do I have a voice note? Yeah, I do voice note uh, to some people. Some people not, because I know they don't like it. It's a lot easier if I can just go da 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 than type out. But I have a rule as well that if I get a long voice note, I usually give it about 10, 15 seconds. I'm not prepared to listen to like two or three minutes, unless I'm playing snook and I can just have it on in the background. Okay, I am now going to listen to the first voice note. Oh, God. Hi, Ronnie. Adam Jamili here, British sprinter. Oh, uh, my question to you is that not many people know that you're quite an avid runner. Um, so firstly, why did you originally get into running? What is it about running that you like? And can you give us an example of maybe your favourite session that you do on hmm. or off the track? Okay. Thanks and hope you're well. <laughs> That's a nice message. He's a different type of runner to me. He's a sprinter. I'll probably get injured if I try and run like him. Uh, what is it about running that I love? I think it's just, it allows me to clear my mind. Um, it allows me to... Oh, I've got to record it! So I just press this little thing in. This is WhatsApp, isn't it? Because I don't do WhatsApp. So I've got to send this to Adam. Hi, Adam. What now? Hi, Adam. Yeah, thanks for the message, mate. Um, yeah, really nice. That's just doing my head in. Hi, Adam. Yeah, thanks for the message, mate. Um, yeah, you're a sprinter. I'm a bit of a long distance plodder. The running, I love it. It's just, um, I'm up in the morning. It's so easy. Put the trainers on over the forest with me mates. Clear the mind. I get away with a few more calories because I like my food. Uh, it, it stops me from smoking. I still have the odd cigarette. I always say I run for the benefits of running. And yeah, and the sessions that I like to do, probably a hill session over the forest, like a minute long. I probably do like between 10 and 15 of them. Thanks for the message, mate. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll get to run one day. I could join in with maybe one of your little sprinting sessions and then I'll take you on a little slow jog. See how you deal with that one. All right, mate, take it easy. Good luck. Ciao, ciao. Okay, it's my next message. Quite like yes, Ronnie the Rocky, what's happening, mate? It's Rio here. Listen, mate, I've got a question for you. Outside the world of snooker, which other athlete inspires you and why? Mm. Would there be any footballers in there, I wonder? I wonder, ah. Oh. Yeah, thanks for the message, Rio. Um, yeah, is there any sports people? Well, obviously individual sports, so a big one for me, obviously was Federer. Um, now it's Djokovic, because obviously he's doing some fantastic things in his sport and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, in football, obviously, I'd have to say Messi. I think he's just the governor. Um, you just watch him play. It's just something else, in it? I think we all love Messi. So yeah, big Lionel fan, big Djokovic fan. Usain Bolt as well, mate. He's one of the, the kings for me. But yeah, I love a lot, you know, all sport really. But yeah, mate, that's who I like. And uh, yeah, thanks for the message. Hope you're well. And um, yeah, seems like all good for you. And um, maybe catch up with you at some point. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Have you met Rio Ferdinand? Yeah, yeah, I like Rio, yeah. He's a nice guy. Here we go. Let's press play. I think this one is from a fan. So. Hi, Ronnie. Tom here. Big fan of watching you the last couple of years. Couple. Two questions I'd like to ask you. How did you get into snooker and who was your favourite snooker player growing up? Yeah, thanks for that question, Tom. How did I get into snooker? Um, just by playing with my cousin. Uh, I was about seven at the time. He had a table in his house. Started hitting a few balls of him and then my dad got me a table. And who is my favourite player growing up? Uh, it would have been Steve Davis. Uh, yeah, Davis was like a hero of mine growing up. I loved Jimmy, Jimmy first, and then kind of moved on to Davis as I got a bit more serious about the game. And then once Hendry came along, he became my favourite. So yeah, I'm a bit of a, I'm not very loyal in the, in the, in, in, <laughs> in who I sort of follow and admire. I sort of, if someone better comes along, I sort of latch on to them sort of thing. So yeah, but thanks for the question and um, yeah, take it easy. What's the weirdest mm. message I've had from a fan? Uh, <laughs> I've, had, I've had some really strange ones, but I can't say what they are. Yeah, you've had some weird, funny old ones. I don't, do you know what? I don't actually read a lot of the comments or the stuff. They kind of don't get through to me. But I've had a few few weird ones over the years. More like stalkers more than anything. <laughs> I wouldn't call them fans. I call them like lunatic. I don't really like, like that film Misery. If, if I go into too much detail, they might capture me and kidnap me. You want me to go, yeah? 
Hi, Ronnie. It's Orla Shinoui here. When we did our podcast conversation oh, yeah, with Greg Rutherford lovely. last year, you said something that ah. really stuck in my mind. And that was your practice of keeping a note of how you're feeling and your emotions on any given day by drawing a happy face, a sad face, or a neutral face in your diary. Mm. So I was just wondering what has been in your diary of late, whether they've been mostly happy faces, sad faces, or neutral faces, and why? Uh, thanks, Orla. Um, yeah, I remember that day. That was good. We had a good time on the old podcast. But yeah, yeah, I keep it. I do it for my tournaments, so it's sort of like not particularly for a day, it'll be how did I feel after the tournament. There's been a lot of happy faces um, this year. The snooker hasn't been great, but the travelling and the enjoyment I've got from being at the tournament has been really good. And sometimes it's about knowing that, you know what, I'm not feeling it at the moment, but how can I turn an average week into a great week? So sometimes a happy face is just because I've been able to really maximise my time wherever I've been and yeah and it's not always about the snooker so a lot of people say I've not really had much to be happy about on the snooker tables I haven't done much but that's just the game that comes and goes sometimes but big on sort of just trying to stay in a good place and thanks for your question and yeah brilliant to do that thing that chat that we had and yeah hope you're all well and loving the cycling yeah, yeah it's all right I'm just what scared if I press the right now here's draw face yeah happy yeah. yeah happy at the moment if this is like happy, I don't know if I look miserable. A lot of people say I look f***ing miserable, but actually I'm really happy. <laughs> I can have a miserable look. I think it's just playing snooker for 30 years, you sort of turn into a miserable looking person. But it doesn't mean you're miserable. My next voice note, 15 seconds this one. It's not bad. I have a question for Ronnie O'Sullivan. It's Raymond Van Barneveld here. Hi, oh, Ronnie. Raymond. Um, the question is, what is harder, a one four seven break or a perfect nine dart finish in darts. Ah. Well, I think a snooker break. Really? All the best. Bye bye. Really? Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Raymond thinks a 147 is harder than a nine darter. Thanks for the question, Raymondo. Hope you're well, mate. Love watching you play, mate. That silky little action you had. You and the power. Watching you to slug it out over the years. Thanks for the great entertainment. But um, yeah, I'd have to say, I think the maxi probably is. The 147 must be harder, I think. But listen, I'm not I'm not here to sort of say one is harder and one's not harder. I think what you guys do on a dartboard and the way you make it look so easy is just unbelievable. So total respect to you guys. Um, you're one of the heavyweights of, of darts. Just being able to make a nine dart or 147 is a great achievement. But yeah, I tend to agree with you. Maybe the 147 might be slightly harder just because it's 36 shots where you've got only nine to do. Nine, eighteen, twenty-seven, thirty-six. So yeah, we have to do four times the amount of work that you do. Anyway, hope you're all well. Take care. Ciao ciao. What do you think is the hardest thing to do in sport? So if you had like a hole in one as well. Yeah. Um I think the one four seven's got to be the hardest thing, isn't it? Because Yeah, I think hole in one, a little bit of luck involved. Um with the one four seven, you think uh, there, there, there might be a little bit of luck involved at some point, but probably 95% of it or 98% of it would have to be all skill based. So I'd have to say, yeah, the, probably the, the 147 is hardest. Ronnie, it's a simple one for me. Mark right here. Firstly, thank you for the joy you've given us over all these years. Please don't stop anytime soon. Keep up the good work. You're an absolute legend. Uh, and my question is, what is the best county in the UK? And why? Or should I say, tell them why? <laughs> the best county in the UK. Yeah, thanks for the question, Mark. Um, you got me there, counties. I know you probably want me to say Essex and how some great Essex is, and I know it is a good little county, but I'm probably going to have to disappoint you on this one, mate. It's going to have to be Hertfordshire. Anyway, hope you're well, and good to see you're all good, and um, yeah, take it easy. Ciao for now. Have you met Mark Wright before? No. No, I'm not, I'm not an Essex boy. I live in the area, but I don't socialise in Essex. It's not my, not my thing. <laughs> I, need to get, I need to get the tighter trousers on. I need to get the, like, oh, bleed, you know. I don't know, yeah. I, I, I cringe a lot when I hang out, when I hit, watch that only way is Essex. Tree more, tree more. That's how the Irish would say it, tree. Should we go? 22 seconds. Ooh, they're venturing into that point where I'm 
If it's not interesting enough, we could just cut it off a bit early. Do you mind if I cut it off a bit early if it's boring? Hi, Ronnie. Uh, Chris Froome here. Please excuse my ignorance. Chris Froome. I've always wondered, Legend. watching super players play, what, what kind of training do you need to to get to the top of your game? Wow. What, what kind of, I, I know there's obviously the, the mental side, the mental ah, preparation. He's a serious guy, this fella. What kind of physical training is generally involved wow. in your in your day-to-day -day life? He's a serious dude, this fella, isn't he? Wow, Chris Froome. Chris, thanks for the message, mate. Um, followed your career, mate. Unbelievable, mate. You're a machine. You are an absolute machine. Um, one of the all-time greats in my book, mate. So, yeah, thanks for the message. Right, physical stuff for snooker. Really, you don't really need a lot of physical uh, attributes to play snooker, but I think it would be advisable just to clear your head, and I would say the equivalent of a 20 minute run every day would be ideal because you're kind of, it's long enough to kind of get a bit of a sweat on, but short enough to not overdo it and kind of leave yourself knackered for when you have to play snooker. So um, I tend to run a lot further because I got hooked on running long distance races and running for a club. So I tend to do like 35, 40 miles a week. And a lot of the time I'm absolutely too tired to even play snooker, so I've got it the wrong way round, but I'm more into running than I am actually snooker. <laughs> I have been for the last 15, 20 years, but it helps me um, because it's like a bit of a distraction away from the snooker and it helps me just have a better perspective on things really. But yeah, we're not, it's not really a physical game, but um, snooker is a bit of a mental sport, so the more you can clear the mind, the better it is for when you go back to the snooker to play again. Hope that makes sense, mate. And yeah, good luck with, with whatever you're doing. But yeah, love your smashing them up their mountains, mate. Brilliant. Take it easy. Ciao, ciao. Oh, I couldn't go on a bike ride with him having a laugh. Oh, maybe I'll need a car or something. I could chat to him while he's like, <laughs> yeah. get me like one of my electric bikes. Yeah, definitely. If I get me, get me my electric bike out, which I've got, and if Froomey wants me, I'm coming up there, mate. I come up at that, whatever they call that mountain. Alps du or something, isn't it? There you go, so I do know my cycling. Yeah, I'd love to go on a bike ride with Froomey. Maybe I'll take him out on a run. I'm sure he can run like for, forever as well. Who could top that? Muhammad Ali, the greatest. It's all downhill now, mate. It's all downhill. Here we go, my next voice note. Hi, Ronnie, it's Rianne. I was just wondering oh, if Rianne. you would, at some point in the future, get involved and support the women as a professional tour. Would you get involved at all? As you know, you've always been a supporter of me, thankfully, and obviously ah. the women's game. Ah, I love Rianne. She's a superstar. Um, ah, Rianne, I'd love to be able to... I think you girls deserve so much more than what you get from the sport. You shouldn't have to be playing on the men's tour week in, week out. You should be in like, the tennis and the golfers. You're great at what you do. All the girls are fantastic. Um, I would love to be able to do something with you. But while I'm playing, it's really hard. But I do have ambitions to stay in snooker for as long as I can. And when I'm not playing, I will definitely be looking to support snooker in any way. That's something we can chat about at some point and try and make it happen. But yeah, you girls definitely deserve it. You're great. And yeah, love you to bits. 12 time world champion. What a legend. I've only got seven, you got 12. So you put me to shame. Anyway. Speak to you soon. Ciao, ciao. I know, I know who this is. How? Oh. I don't know, I just got a feeling. Right. Okay. I got a feeling. Here we go. Hi, Ronnie. It is Ears McCoggan here. Now, I know that you are a very keen runner. Oh, really? So my question is, what wow. has been one of the most, your favourite races that you've taken part in and one of the hardest that you've ever taken part in? Ah, Ailish McCoggan. Yeah, she's a machine, mate. What a runner she is. Ailish, how you doing? Um, oh, mate, honestly, i just got to say, well done. Been watching you winning them medals and having that great, you know, you had race after race, wasn't it? Last year, I think it was. Yeah, it was, for me as a fan, I was loving it. You know, you, I know you had to go championship after championship, but to get to see you race and do so well was unbelievable. I think, um, for me, the hardest race that I've ever done was the English cross-country championships it was over parliament hill nine and a half miles mud filth literally like oh the first hill was brutal 1500 runners and it was all the top top you know 
top runners in the country there. So, but I was in good shape and I managed to get round. I think I come about 180th out of 1500. So I was pleased with that. I was pretty in good shape then. But yeah, that was a tough, tough, brutal race. Um, probably one of the best races I ever had was in the Met League, which is like one of the be best divisions for running. So you've got Highgate in there, all the top sort of London clubs. And I think I came, my best result was 50th in the Met League, which was quite, quite a good achievement. So I'm much better on the mud, the hills, because I'm not the most elegant of runner. So I, I managed to sort of hold my own on, on that sort of stuff, but yeah. Love my running and uh, yeah, watching you do well is great. So yeah, good luck and keep, keep going for it. Ciao, ciao. Bye, 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 bye. That's it for my voice notes. That was a hell of a lot of fun. Really enjoyed doing it. Now I need to get back to the practice table. Thank you love that. Much. There you go. Yay. That's great, great work. <laughs>